Welcome back guys, we are back at it with uh, the Audi A6 2 litre turbo diesel. We've replaced the alternator on this, we've put the auxiliary belt back on. It's now time to look into changing the EGR valve. I mean, currently is somewhat running, it's somewhat functioning. That is because we've had this out before. Uh, I tried to replace it with um, a brand new EGR valve, a Chinese version bought off of eBay. However, that did not, um, I mean, it did fit. It was all perfect in terms of fitment. However, it um, the, the, the plug did not match with, I mean, it did match with the um, car's harness, but um, it did not recognize the EGR valve. And I'll show you later on why. I still have that new EGR valve. So what we've done is we've put the old back on. What the, the, the problem with this EGR valve is uh, right in here, if it focuses. So right in here, there's a flap, which you'll be able to see once we get this out. That flap snapped uh, clean off uh, on this EGR valve. So what we've done is we glued it back together with some type of epoxy, just sort of, um, see whether that was causing our issue which it did so once we get that out we'll be able to see what sort of damage this has what was wrong on the egr valve that we bought off of ebay and we're going to be installing a second hand uh, genuine egr valve that was uh taken off of the scrapyard off of a similar car so get going so in order to remove the egr valve we'll mainly be using this uh torx bits We'll be using the XT30 bit and the star number eight, probably or number 10, probably for these big bolts on the um, EGR valve pipe. But you have it hot uh, on the EGR pipe. So, first things first, what we're going to want to do is um, undo the bolts on this uh, coolant pipe. Uh, we have it already undone as we've done some work before on the alternator and. Uh, the auxiliary belt so this pipe bolts onto uh, this bracket here with a 13 millimeter uh, bolt it also has two more bolts bolting it, bolting it onto the block down there I'm not sure you can see that but uh, there's one under here and it also has uh, a bracket that holds this wiring harness that also bolts onto the um coolant pipe bracket so once you have that undone then we can start working on to undoing the bolts onto the uh throttle actuator which is this bit right here which your charge pipe well intercooler pipe connects to so you will undo this by just simply removing this clip here um which I, if i have a screwdriver i'll remove it now you just pop this out just like so and then you'll be able to slide your charge pipe out be careful it's full of oil so you can ditch that out of the way somewhere it's not going to be in the way even if it's it's stuck down there we'll be mainly working on around this area so we're going to get cracking um with the bolts onto the uh, throttle actuator remove that uh, get that out of the way and then we'll be uh, moving on to the jar valve itself as I said, we'll be mainly using these um, Torx bits. This is a Torx T30. Um, there's three bolts holding the throttle actuator in place. There's one up here, which is this one right here, right in view. There's, there's the second one, uh, which is right down here. I'm not sure you can see that, to be honest. So the second one, it's right down here. I mean, you can feel it. If you run your hand down there, you, you, you can definitely feel that. So that's the second one. And then we have a third bolt, which is right at the back. If you can get it to focus, it's right back here. Mm. 
Yeah, I'm not sure you can see that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the replacement, one of the replacement uh, EGR valves so I can show you better where they are. Right, so here we have two EGR valves. This is a brand new one, uh, not good. This is a, a second hand one, which is the one that we're going to be putting on. So let's just grab this for demonstration sake. So this sits in here like so. And you have three main bolts that uh, hold the throttle actuator onto the EGR valve, which are one up here, which is your bolt that you can see right up here. And then you have the, the two at the bottom, uh, which are a bit hard to, to get into video really. So you got those two. You can start with the first one, remove the first one, as I said before, the bolts uh, holding this onto the EGR valve, they are uh, T30. Remove the first one, and then what you, mean, what you need to be mindful of is that these are different sizes. I mean, I believe the top one and the one at the back, which actually you can, you can probably see, you can probably see here, that's the second one. They're different sizes. Uh, I mean, the one, the one right at the back here, that is a very long one. Uh, you'll definitely not miss that. But you may get these two mixed up. So be mindful of, of their position, where they sit and where they bolt onto the EGR valve. So we're gonna get on with removing this and then we'll get back once we've um, uh, removed the throttle actuator. They said I got style for you Ain't seen you at the top, it's been a while for you So this is your throttle actuator This is uh, where it bolts onto uh, There's three bolts One over here One over here And the last one over there This is a bit tricky to uh, get out I mean, the, the, you, you run a chance of uh, dropping the bolt into the engine bay if you're not careful. So be very careful with the one in there or have some uh, magnet on an extension that uh, to hand that you can use if if you end up dropping the bolt. Um, these are the bolts. As I said, they're different sizes, but these two seem to be sim uh, the same. So it doesn't matter in sort of which of the holes you end up putting that. But uh, this one, it's over here as it bolts onto the actual inlet manifold as well. So it goes through the EGR valve and it bolts onto the manifold itself. So now, in order to get the EGR valve out, we'll have to first undo these two bolts, which are a star bit size uh, number size 10. So we're gonna be using this to undo these two bolts and then it's a T30 again for these bolts down here. So you got one, two and a third at the back. On offense, no defense, still strong, no weakness. Strong. Used to say I wouldn't beat this, now they wish they could beat this. Table setting, not tables turn. Guys playing, don't say a word. Know the price, cause I know my worth. My time, get what I deserve. Trent said I got style for you. Ain't seen you at the top, it's been a while for you. So there she is. This is the EGR valve that we took out. Um, before you say, you know, gaskets and all that, um, all the new seals, the new gas, the gaskets, they're all new as we've had this out before, we've put um, the new gaskets on. So we're not going to be replacing those, we're going to be reusing them. Um, this is the one that came out. And here are the bolts that holding the um, EGR valve in place. Right, so here we have three EGR valves. This is the one that came out of the car, the broken one. Uh, here we have a new one that we bought off of eBay. I think it cost us um, 40, 45 quid or something like that. And this is a used part, a used EGR valve that we got off of the, the scrapyard. Now, this is the one that we're gonna be putting on to the car, which if you ask me, it's the ugliest looking out of them all, uh, but we're going to be giving them a, a bloody good clean before we put it in. I mean, we've soaked it in uh, degree, so you, but uh, it still needs some some scrubbing. So with the current EGR, 
what ended up happening is the flap that is supposed to open and close as the as the ECU tells it to snapped off it was literally broken what we've done is we've epoxied it together but uh, obviously this is not a repair that is going to last so it requires replacement now it probably it probably is still in in place i mean it 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 it's fixed in place but that epoxy will eventually melt and it will be back to square one so this is no good now with the new egr valve that we bought off of ebay put this in the car installed it correctly everything was fine and then when we went to connect it which i'm going to show you in a minute uh when we went to connect it the car would just still think that there was no egr in place so, i mean the, or either the connection was was no good and that is because of the well it's purely because it's it's a cheapo uh version really and it, it's it's not like the oem one but what you have is in here if it focuses where the connector goes this is a six pin connection so you have six your six pins and that's about it uh on your oem version you have your six pins and then some additional pins around it uh same with the with the broken egr valve so there's definitely a, a, a difference in the connection i don't know if it's the case just with our part or it's something it's just something different from the manufacturer of this uh particular egr valve so we'll try to return this but um i'm i'm, I'm not putting my hopes into it so we're going to be plugging the um, new EGR valve that we're going to put in just to make sure it functions, just to make sure that the car recognizes it. Uh, and I'm also going to show you what uh, the car does when we plug in the new EGR valve that is not, not uh, suitable for the car. So let's plug this in and I'm going to show you what we have on the dashboard. So we're going to plug in the EGR valve that we just took out, which electronically it's absolutely fine and mechanically not so much. I'm going to plug that in. I'm going to show you when we put the ignition on. Just one second. It's a little bit difficult to, to do this one handed. Right, so that is plugged in. Uh, I'm going to leave it like that for a minute. Now, here's what we have. We have an error showing us that DJ is not plugged in correctly. Uh, let me just turn this down a bit. And it will throw a P045 um, if I'm not mistaken. Well, I shall tell you that right now. Oh, actually, it's, it's giving us a total actuator fault at the minute. That's because we haven't connected the total actuator back. So we're going to do this now and uh, come back. So we have now connected the throttle actuator as well, as well as the um, EGR valve. And we now should have no errors on the dashboard. And we still do now, but... Is. Right, so now, uh, I mean, the uh, ESP light is on because we have a, a flat tire at the front. So now the car recognizes the uh, EGR valve. So what will happen when we put on the cheap part from eBay, it will flash the glow plug, plug light, which uh, ultimately means that it, the car pretty much doesn't recognize the EGR valve and it, it will also throw an EGR related code uh, giving you an indication that the uh, voltage is low on on the EGR valve it took us a while to figure that out uh, obviously going you know looking into the connection 
of the EGR valve is probably the last thing that you, you, you're gonna do when you when you're replacing a part. I mean, it, it's the same part, same uh, part number that you order. You, you'd expect it to be the same. However, so we had to do some. Uh, we spent quite a lot of time in in actually diagnosing this, finding out that the part that we had uh, was actually no good. So I have now connected the eBay EGR onto the car and just for demonstration purposes uh, if I can find the key this is what you're gonna get uh, glow plug light flashing and apart from the EML that it <coughs> What you're gonna also have is a P045, uh, P0405 error code, which again indicates a low voltage reading onto the ECU from the EGR valve. So that can mean a lot of things. It can mean a, a faulty wiring harness. It can mean the a faulty EGR valve, it can uh, be all sorts of things, um, battery issue. So in this particular instance is the actual EGR valve that is not is not good. So we're going to be putting the uh, second hand EGR valve on and um, see where that goes. So we've given our new EGR valve a bit of a clean and it's now time to put it back on. Just reverse what we've done so far so you start by putting the EGR bolts back on uh, then attach the EGR pipe and then reattach the throttle actuator back onto it right so we've bolted everything back in fix the EGR valve in place as well as the throttle actuator bolted back in the coolant pipe onto, onto its brackets uh, gave it a little bit of a clean nothing too fancy but it will do all that's left to do now really is to just stick the engine cover back on. It just clips in. It's got those rubber mounts. So that's about it for, for, for now guys. So there we have it guys. It's now running smooth. No hiccups, no lumpy idle. Seems to have power through the rev range. Running as a should basically. Uh, there's no smoking from the back. Whilst it had the old DGR valve in, it was also smoking from the DPF area. It was just, just basically smoking from everywhere, really. But it seems to be working all right. I'm gonna be driving it for about 200, 300 miles, just to, just to sort of uh, make sure everything's all right with it. Uh, and that's about it for this one. Now guys, this is it for this video. And I really hope you found it informative if you did uh give it a thumbs up please subscribe to the channel and uh stay tuned for more content <laughs>